We uh, are glad to be back at the church. We was gone two weeks and uh, had a good time while I was gone to Jerome. I did enjoy myself. But you miss people. You get out of the groove of doing the things that you do. And then when you come back, it takes a long time to get back into it. Or it does me. I'm kind of slow anyway. But I went to church while we were gone. While I was gone, the little town of Elkhart, Kansas, has 1,800 people. Very small place. Uh, there's a lot of industry there because it supports the farmers and it's the county seat and all that. But still, there's not many people live there. But they had a, a the first Sunday I was there. I went to First Baptist Church, a nice church out there on the edge of town. So I went there and then. Uh, just full of good people. Just amazing me how many. We watch the news all the time and we think this world and this world is dark and this world is evil. But there's a lot of good people in this old world. We, it's good to meet them, you know, and that's the way that church was. And, and the second Sunday I was there, I went to the first church of God. And uh, it was the same way there. Great people, just great people, solid earth people. A lot of them farmers, a lot of them. Uh, They've got these pivots down to irrigate their crops, and it's got thousands of acres of land out there. That's how they make their living. And some years they make uh, some money, and some years they don't. That's just the way that it is. It's like any other industry. Uh, but anyway, I enjoyed my time out there. Like I said, it's it's amazing how many good people they are around. Good news don't get the press. You know, the good news, even the news of the gospel, the news of salvation, that, that people can be saved, people can have a, a better life, not only here on this earth, but they can have a better life in the in the world to come. Uh, that good news, it just don't like the, it don't like the newspapers, amen? But it's out there, and there's people that enjoy that. They enjoy this gift of salvation, and, and I was blessed to be among some of them. We'll be in the book of John, Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 9. I want to welcome everybody watching by the video. Hope you'll enjoy the message this morning. Hope you'll glean something from it that will help you in this life that we live here upon the earth. In the book of John, chapter 1, verse 9. Start reading right there. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, for the, uh, for the congregation. We ask, Father, as you minister to us today, Lord, you'd meet every need in the house. Lord, that you'd open our minds, open our eyes, open our ears, Lord, that we might receive the message that you have for us. We praise you, Lord, this morning. Give you glory in this house in Christ's name. And amen. When you look at this first chapter of John, there's 51 verses in this chapter. And as you go through those chapters and you look at what was written by this disciple, the one that called himself the disciple that Jesus loved, as you look through here, we see that he's given a witness to the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you read these scriptures here, the first part of this, you see that the veil is pulled back that we might look and see just who Jesus is. His first witness of the Apostle John is in the first five verses of this chapter. And in those first five verses, he tells us that Jesus Christ is the living Word. And then uh, we see inserted there in verses 6 through 8, uh, that there is the witness of John the Baptist is inserted there. And John the Baptist declares Jesus Christ as the light of the world. And then when you get down here to this ninth verse, we see the second witness of the apostle, and he calls uh, Jesus the light of man. Amen. Amen. 
So it's good to read this and understand what he's saying here. And if we think about our world today, and as I said, our world's in desperate straits. As you look at the world today, uh, you see it's full of darkness. It's full of evil uh, everywhere that you look. Uh, sometimes I think about the darkness of this world and, and the evil of this world. And there's times in my life I can feel it. Have you ever been there? Uh, people talk about being in the coal mine and it being so dark that you can uh, feel the darkness around you. Amen. Uh, me and Barbara, we was out at Flatwoods, or, uh, northeast of Flatwoods, our little ways. And we was coming back from an old camp we had up there one time and rounding the curve. And I thought I caught a glimpse of a gold dome off in the distance. So we turned around and went back and I said, let's drive out there and look at that. So we drive out there to look at this place, and it is a worship center. And it all around it was all these gardens and these grounds, and, and it was ordinate, ordinate. And we walked around and we looked at all these things through those gardens, and, and it was crumbling and falling apart like the things in this world does. But still yet, it was something to lay your eyes on. And as we looked at it, when we finished, we walked up the steps and began to walk around this worship center. I'm not sure what it was. I looked it up at one time and I knew, but I don't remember now. But as we walked around at real close to the walls of that place, I could hear the hum, the hum of the inside of that place. Yeah. And they were chanting in there. And Barbara told me, said, do you want to go inside? And I said, there's no way in the world I'd go in that place. And I, felt, I told her, I said, I feel like already I need to go home and take a shower. Amen. And because the evil, it was an evil place. Listen, if it's not of God, it's evil. And I told Barbara, I said, it is a dark place. I don't want to go in there. It reminded me of the time in Egypt. If you go over to the 10th chapter of the book of Exodus, we find there that the ninth plague upon Pharaoh was about to be poured out there. And God told Moses to raise his staff toward the heavens that darkness might come upon the earth. And we know that the darkness coming, and the Lord said it would be darkness that could be felt. Amen. It was a thick darkness that was over the land of Egypt for three days. And the Bible says that they didn't move from the place that they were in for those three days. It was a darkness that could be felt. And that's the way our world is today. And it is dark and it's an evil place. Yet and when you look at these verses of Scripture, and we see the problem is addressed in that night first. And we're shown here that there's hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is. There's hope for us who believe in the Lord today. Uh, even though this world is dark, uh, people say it's, uh, the world's on its way to hell. Uh, but listen, I'm not going there. I've got the, the hope of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and this world might be evil, but I don't have to be evil. Uh, this world might be lost, but I don't have to be lost. And it's the same way with all of us Christians. As we read down through these verses, notice what he says there in verse 9. And we find that Christ is the true light. He is a light that dispels darkness. He's a light that dispels evil. Now that's who he is today. And John depicts him as that light. And as you read down through that verse, John calls him not just a light. He calls him a true light. Don't miss that. There's people in this world who uh, claim to be a light. They claim that they can lead you out of darkness. Uh, they'll claim all kinds of things, Brother Lonnie. Uh, uh, well, they talk about uh, how uh, they can shine a light on things and they can lead you away from even the fear of, of death and the fear of hell. Uh, they can lead you away from your shame. They can lead you away from all these things. And thereafter, they claim to be those lights, but if the revelation they have uh, comes from their own mind, if the revelation they have comes from anywhere except the Word of God, if the revelation that they have and they give to you uh, comes from any other source, uh, perhaps their claim to fame or whatever it might be, uh, then it is a lie. Amen. Amen. That's exactly what it is. There's only one light to come into the world, and the light to come into the world is the Lord Jesus Christ. So their position uh, that they give us is defective. Amen. It's frail. Uh, it don't amount to a hill of beans uh, in that the Word of God is true, and the Word of God is the light, the living Word, the light, the true light that shines into this old world. Amen. Amen. 
When the light shines, what does it do? It illuminates, does it not? If you look at something in the dark, sometimes it's hard to figure out what it is. I remember when I was young and I had good eyes, I didn't want no light around me. Didn't like a lot of light on the things I worked on. It bothered my eyes. Amen. But nowadays, I gotta have light to see about anything I want to look at. And a lot of times, if it's not dark and you begin to look at something, you can't figure it out. You can't figure the details out of. But when you shine a little bit of light on it, <laughs> it's completely different. Amen. You see it as it is. <clears throat> the apostle here tells us. Uh, that Jesus is the true light and he stands that ground alone, does he not? Uh, the light that he shines, Brother Bill, listen, uh, it's clear and it's pure. The light he shines uh, upon this old world and shines down upon us, uh, surely today uh, it is clean and it's good. Paul told the church at Ephesus in the fifth chapter, he said, for you were sometimes darkness uh, but now you are light in the Lord. And he goes on to tell them to walk as children of the light. Uh, we've been preaching on Wednesday night, on Thursday night. I know there's been a stretch. I wasn't here. But the first lesson that we taught on discipleship was the call of the disciples. And how all that are saved are called to be a disciple. We're called in discipleship. And last Thursday we talked about the cost of discipleship. Right? There's a cost to being a disciple of Christ. And certainly there is. But we've talked about those. And we know that we as disciples. Uh, we're not to walk in the darkness. Amen. We're to walk in the light as God is in the light, as He is in the light. And if we do, uh, we'll know that it's a true light. Paul goes on to tell that church, he says, walk as children of light. And if you will walk as children of light, and then uh, your life is going to bear fruit that will identify you with who you are. Amen. He says, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and and righteousness and truth proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. See, there's a test as to whether we're walking in the light or whether we're walking in the darkness. Now, there's certainly a test for that. If you walk in the light, you'll bear goodness. I like that, don't you? You'll bear goodness just as a true light, Brother Jake. Uh, he bore goodness uh, in his life as he walked upon this earth. And you'll bear righteousness, he said, uh, which means you will do the right thing just as he did the right thing when he was upon this earth. Uh, and he says that this true light, uh, it would bear righteousness. And uh, that's what he did. Uh, he bore righteousness as he walked upon the face of this earth. He did the things that was right, like I said, and he will bear the truth, and the truth uh, is given to us by the true light of the God, word of God, uh, which is Jesus Christ, the living word, as John uh, talks about in him here in the first chapter. So we look at that, and we look at this fruit that we're supposed to uh, bear, we're supposed to have it in our life, and he goes on to say, uh, talking about these disciples, the followers of Christ, he said, they'll have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Amen. Now that's Paul's word, just not mine. Amen. That's what he says there. You see, the light penetrates and it cuts through the darkness. Yeah. You can be in the coal mines, all y'all been in the coal mines, y'all know what it's like in there. And you can turn your light out and you can't see your hand in front of your face. But they can be somebody, it can be 20 breakthroughs down an entryway down through there. Uh, somebody will turn a little light on and you can see it forever down through there. Uh, see, it takes a little bit of light, but it penetrates the darkness and Christ does the same thing. He enlightens us that we might see. Amen. He enlightens us. He reveals. Uh, uh, that you may uh, look at something in the dark, like I said, but you put the light on it and it reveals uh, what that is. John tells us that Christ is the true light. That's what he says there in verse 9 in our scripture today, that that was the true light he calls him. Uh, I think about uh, him uh, uh, shining the light on things and he reveals a new light. He even reveals a new world to us. You go over to the 14th chapter of John and you begin to read there in the first verse. And most of y'all can quote that in the 14th chapter of John. But what takes place there is Jesus is speaking to his disciples. And in that 14th chapter, he answers a question that was put forth there by Thomas, I believe it was. 
that he had a question. Amen. And see, Jesus had told his disciples that he was going to go away, Brother Lonnie. And you preached that. I was here when you did that in 2006, it was, uh, right here in this church. Amen. Now, I remember that message uh, uh, that you had that day. But listen, uh, he told his disciples, I'm going away. And I'm going to go away and I'm going to prepare a place for you. Uh, and he tells Thomas that. And what does he say unto him? He said, and whither I go, ye know, and the way you know. But Thomas, he said, I don't know where you're going. We don't know where you're going. We don't understand where you're going. So how can we know the way? Well, what did Jesus do? I believe that Christ shined a little light on the subject. Amen. And he began to tell Thomas, well, uh, Thomas, I am the way. You want to go to where I'm going? And you want to go to the place that I'm preparing for you? You need to understand that I am the way. And not only that, he told them, I am the truth. Amen. Jesus Christ and the gospel is the truth. You want to go to heaven, you'll obey the word of God. And you'll come by the only way there is to come. There's only one way to heaven. And it's the true way that's led forth by the true light. Amen. So we know the way to heaven. He's telling Thomas, I am the truth. And he said, I am the light. If you want to know the way, shine the light on the path that you want to walk on. And it will enlighten for you that you can find your way. You want to know the truth? Uh, shine some light on the subject. Uh, when you begin to discuss the subject and you wonder if it's the truth, if it's a lie, uh, you need to shine the light of Almighty God and the Word of God upon it. And it won't take you too long to figure out whether it's the truth or whether it's not the truth. Amen? Uh, and then, uh, not only that, if you want to know uh, eternal life, there's only one way to know eternal life. And, and the true life is Jesus Christ. He told Thomas, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Any other way, any other so-called truth, any other life, it's in darkness and it'll lead you into darkness and you will never find your way to the most important things to your soul. That's right. Amen. Amen. You'll never find a way that way. I think about light. Light keeps us from groping around in the dark, does it not? Feeling your way around, stumping your toes and all that. We've all done that. That's what happens when you walk in darkness and you have things happen to you. But you shine a light on the path and you'll see the correct path. You'll see the way that you need to go. And Jesus, uh, he speaks to it in another place. And he says, while you have light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of the light. And we're told that we're not to be children of darkness. Right. We're not to be in darkness. Amen. We're not to be in that. It's no good. Listen, I walked in darkness too long in my life. I walked in the dark. Amen. I could not see, Brother Lonnie, what sin and disobedience was doing to me. It was tearing me apart. It was destroying my life. I had no hope whatsoever because of the life that I was leading. And I was in darkness that I could not see exactly what it was doing to me until the Lord shone the light on me. Now, He shone the true light on me. He didn't shine a light on me that was a false light or the opinion of me. He shined a true light on me. See, a false light will shine on you, and it'll tell you things like, well, you're not so bad, man. Uh, you're, you're better than a lot of them people out here. Uh, that's what it will tell you, amen. It'll tell you, uh, you're just uh, doing this, and you're just doing You're just trying a few things. Uh, you're just searching. You're trying to find yourself. Oh, that's all right. But when the Lord shone the true light on me, Brother Harvey, uh, he showed me exactly uh, who I was. He showed me exactly where I stood on the edge of eternity. And when he shined the light on me, he illuminated me in the truth. And I come to realize I was just like the church at Laodicea. And what did it say about that church? The Lord showed me that I was wretched, I was miserable, I was poor, I was blind, and I was naked in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. I was naked before God. I could hide nothing in my life on the outside or the inside. And he illuminated illuminated me to allow me to see myself as God sees me. Amen. Amen. That's what the true light does to me. See, I was in darkness but when the light shone upon me. I come to realize that the light don't lie. That's exactly Amen. Right. To show you just exactly who you are. He's called the true light. That's what he's called there. 
He said, I've come a light in the world that uh, whosoever believeth on me uh, should not abide in darkness. If I was going to get on the right way, Amen. if I was going to get on the right path, if I was going to know the truth, and I was going to come to realize what I was, I was going to have to step into that light and see myself as God saw me. And that's exactly what happened. Amen. That's exactly what the light does. It doesn't lie. It drives away the darkness that we can see. Amen. I'm glad for the true light tonight. Today. Uh, I'd have to quit that walking in the darkness, and that's exactly what I do. It doesn't lie. It doesn't deceive. It doesn't do any of that thing. Jesus told Nicodemus who come to him at night and Jesus began to speak to him and notice what he said. He said, and this is the condemnation. Check that word out, condemnation. Uh, I talk to people a lot of times, uh, people that are lost and they seem to think that God's keeping them in some kind of a safe position and protecting them until what time they can make, up, make a decision or make up their mind whether they want to be saved or whether they don't want to be saved. The Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible teaches that we are condemned already. Amen. We're already condemned. Uh, we're already on our way to hell. We're already on our way to judgment until we're saved. And no Notice what he told Nicodemus. He begins to speak about this light. And this is a condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Amen. The light that shone on me. Now listen, it wasn't, that I, it wasn't saying that you're not so bad. It wasn't saying to me that everything's going to be all right and that you're a pretty good fellow. Listen, and that wasn't what it was saying. It was telling me that my ways, my deeds, my actions, my works were evil. Amen. Amen. It's exactly what the light done when it shone on me. I had the condemnation upon me. That's why Jesus says, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither come to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. I thought about that word reproved. I looked it up in the Oxford Dictionary. That's a verb. Reprove. It means you are rebuked. You're reprimanded. You're scolded, criticized. You're taken to task. You're berated. You're admonished. And in hillbilly talk, that means you get took to the woodshed. Yes, sir. Amen. You get took to the woodshed. And you're given a good talking to. You're chewed out, so to speak. That's why the world wants nothing to do with the true light. They don't want the true light in their life. And they want the wisdom of men. They want a false light. Well, a false light will not get the job done. No, sir. I tell you today, that until the true light shone in my life and I saw myself as I really was, I didn't know that I was lost. Didn't know the things that were in my life were so horrible. But when he shone that light on me, I come to understand that. Amen. So I'm thankful today for the true light. And I think about Christ being the true light. What does that mean? That means that he's not like other men were. Amen. He wasn't the false light. He didn't come to you with some kind of lie, some kind of a feel-good message and all that. Listen, he told people the way that it was and that when the light shines on us, and we see ourselves as God sees us. And him being the true light, what was his mission in this world? His mission was to shine that light on all men. Amen. Don't miss none of them. Amen. All people, it says. And I think about how did he do that? And we went over these scriptures before. We'll go over them again this morning as we close. If you look over the 19th chapter of the book of Psalms, it says that, that there is a natural revelation of God in this world. There's a natural revelation of God. It says in the 19th chapter, the heavens declare him the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. And if that's not enough, you can go over to 97th chapter of Psalm, and it says there, the heavens declare his righteousness. I like that. Amen. Amen. And you ought to be able to look into the heavens and the true light shine upon you, and you would realize that God is right. Everything that he does is right. He don't do anything wrong. It says the heavens declare his righteousness, and all people see his glory. I think about that. All people. That includes everybody, Jackie. You don't call nobody. Amen. 
all people. If the world stands today and declares there's no God, if the world stands today and declares that, that Jesus is not the Christ of God, they say that because uh, they have closed their ears and they've closed their eyes and they've hardened their heart uh, to be able to say that because the true light has shined upon them and there was a time in their life they knew the truth. But they rejected that. And because they rejected that uh, and shut their eyes because they'd done this, uh, uh, they uh, uh, claimed that there is no God. But that light continues to shine upon men these days. That natural revelation is out there for all men uh, to see. Paul said, the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. That light shines upon his creation. It shines upon the heavens and all the glory of this earth. Everything that he created, and that light shines upon it to reveal to us that yes, there is a God, and yes, there is a creator. It wasn't no big bang. All this just didn't happen. It was created by God Almighty, and it's a natural revelation that is given to all men. I like what he said. This light is so powerful. This revelation is so powerful. Paul says that men would even know his eternal power and Godhead, and we would know it to the point that he declares that all are without excuse. Yeah. Think about that. Amen. He reveals himself to all men. That's what it says. And he declares himself. So who is Jesus? John says there in verse 9 that he's the true light. And the Bible declares, he declares himself that his mission is to shine that light upon all men. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad that light shone on you today? Amen. I'm glad it shone on me. I'm glad it still shines on me. And it shines on everyone upon this old world. Amen. And it reveals to us who we are. Amen. We got something wrong in our life, Brother Wally. Uh, that's what that light's for. It's the true light of the Word of God. And it points out uh, where we need to improve. Uh, the things we need to get rid of in our life. The changes that we need to make. That's what it done to me. I'm continually trying to get rid of something. Amen. That's the way I am in my spiritual life. There's things I want to lay down, things I want to get away from, things that I want to change. And the devil doesn't do that to us. The true light of Almighty God shines on us and shows us in the places that we need to make a change. Amen. I'm glad for that. Those of you watching my video this morning, Hope you enjoyed the message. Hope you got something out of it. Hope you realize that sometimes the, the, the condemnation that comes upon us is because we don't want to come into the light. But when you uh, allow the light of God to shine upon you, it's upon us. The truth of God's word is upon us. And we need to realize the changes that we need to make. So you got something in your life you need to get rid of. And listen, God is just trying to show you that. And you need to get rid of it. Uh, I've laid many a things down. And I'll probably in my life, I'll probably never quit laying things down until the day I go out of this old world. And that's the way that it is. It's for our uh, growth in Christianity. It's for our, he reproves us that we would be better Christians in this old world and a better witness of the salvation that we have. And I hope you'll let the light shine on you. If you're out there this morning, you're not saved, listen, you need to call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. His salvation is free unto all who will call upon him. If you're willing to repent of your sins, you're willing to believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you're willing to believe in the resurrection and the promise of everlasting life through Jesus Christ, you can be saved. And friend, there's nothing like being saved. There's nothing like having a new life in Jesus Christ. So if you're not saved today, you need to be saved. Amen. Call upon him and call upon the name of the Lord, believe upon him, and receive the salvation of God. So it was good to be with you this morning. Until the next time we're together, be blessed.